So, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk about the modernization of land administration in Colombia based on free and open source software for geomatics and standards, which is an ongoing project funded by the Swiss Cooperation in Colombia. It's my first time attending a FOS4G event, so I'm very excited about it. I'm Germán Carrillo, and I have prepared this use case presentation with my colleague Sergio Ramirez, who is over there making photos, and Leonardo Cardona. I'll just mention one thing about me. I'm leading the PyQG stack uh, ranking in GIS Stack Exchange, if you know it which says that I work with Python, that I love QGIS. I'm official QGIS contributor since 2009, and also says that I enjoy contributing back to the community. So this is the agenda for this presentation. First, I'll give you some context about the project so that you can understand its dimension and relevance for Colombian people. Then I'll talk about one of the main challenges we have, which is interoperability. Later we'll see the whole ecosystem of technologies and projects we have at our disposal. And then we'll check the tools that we have built for cadastral data collection and publishing. And at the end, we'll see our free software contributions, future work, and we'll draw a couple of conclusions. So let's start with some context. Colombian organizations for land administration are inefficient and communication among them is far from good. We Colombians live in a post-conflict period. During conflict, it was really difficult to keep our cadaster up to date which implies lack of formalization in land ownership. And given that Colombia has a vast extension of land, we need to formalize land ownership in a massive, decentralized and efficient manner. This time also joining efforts with the private sector. And that imposes a challenge, which is interoperability. So we need optimal communication among a number of governmental organizations and private cadastral operators at several levels, such as a shared language and a way to interchange cadastral data. So in other words, we have both thematic and technical interoperability challenges. So let's see our solution for both of them. On the thematic side, we use the land administration domain model, which is an ISO standard that says that there are parties that have rights, responsibilities uh, over administrative units. And uh, those rights and responsibilities are supported by sources, which are documents, think about deeds, and that the administrative units are represented as spatial units that come from a topographic survey. And then with direct participation of governmental organizations, we have built a Colombian profile called LADM Call, Several extended and thematic models are now based on LADM call, constituting the core of a spatial data infrastructure for land administration. And on the technical side, a Swiss language called Interlis guarantees interoperability in terms of systems and data formats. So keep in mind that organizations do not share the same technology stack, but Interlis is capable of standardizing the input model and the output date. I'll show you here. The input model and the output date. Uh, so if you're a private operator that collects data, you do need the model to start capturing 
data and structuring data. And you should generate data that comply with the model. And this is what authorities control, this part of the diagram. Whereas the DB engine and the GIS client is up to you as a private operator. Nonetheless, the Swiss cooperation proposes and implements a solution for those who cannot afford their own development to send PostgreSQL, PostGIS, and QGIS. Now, at the beginning of this project, we, there were a couple of prior experiences taken as reference. They were the STDM plugin from UN Habitat and the SIT plugin for Cadaster Honduras. The STDM stands for Social Tenure Domain Model, which is a specialization of LADM, although they are not the same. They miss a whole package for topographic surveys, which in Colombian's case is a must for data quality. And the other one is SIT, which stands for Territorial Information System. They only take two packages from LADM, and they miss, for example, parties and rights restrictions and responsibilities. These two solutions were for QGIS 2.x, and they were tied to PostgreSQL. So in general, we take them as reference, but didn't use them because of the reasons I just mentioned, and because we needed a tool for our own workflow. So for our requirements, we had a variety of standards, languages, technologies, systems, plugins at our disposal. Uh, each of them solves a specific problem and specific requirement. The ISO standard describes a way to model land administration conceptually. Interlease allows us to implement the model uh, as well as to validate and share compliant data. QGIS is a very powerful GIS software to structure and run processes on the data. Mapfish Print allows us to generate flexible reports, and so on and so forth. But to give land administration actors a complete solution, to give them bridges between different platforms, different architectures, different systems, different database systems, and to give them graphical users interfaces to do their daily work, uh, we created an integrated tool. Given the high-level nature of Python, we integrated command line Java tools, database drivers, geospatial processing tools, topological tools, and the like in a Python plugin for QGIS, which is called LADM Call Assistant, or Asistente LADM Call in its native language. And on top of it, we create our own set of tools for land administration. So our tools are built to make it easier for different actors to capture, structure, validate, query, generate reports of, detect changes on, and interchange cadastral data, which is basic for land administration organizations. The cadastral authorities communicate with private operators via interlist transfer files, you see here. Whereas users, be them persons or other organizations, can access official cadastral data via the spatial data infrastructure for land administration. Now let's see each actor's workflow. Private operators are in charge of collecting physical, legal, and socioeconomic data. So they go and capture data in the field. As I said, they can use their own technology stack, but they, of course, can use the tools that we offer. 
Then they go to the office to structure and complete the data. They validate topological and logical consistency of the data before exporting them. And finally, they send their exported data to the authority. So on the other hand, the cadastral authority receives the data from the operators, validates the data both automatically and in an assisted manner. And if they find any issue, they return the data to the operator. Once the authority gets valid data, they generate reports. Like those. And also identify changes comparing both collected and official data sets. Uh, like we see here. And after an internal process, uh, authorities formalize land ownership. Finally, users can get official certificates about rights restrictions and responsibilities on the land, which supports decision-making and guarantees land ownership to the people. And this is the whole picture. Now, working together with Swiss experts like OpenGCH and Eisenhut Informatik, uh, we have contributed to free software projects in several ways. Uh, we have included some enhancements and fixes in to QGIS. We have developed a couple of QGIS plugins, namely QGIS Model Baker and the Pen Features to Layer. Uh, which are independent of, but required by the uh, LADM call assistant. And we have also extended the ELI2DB software by adding support for Oracle and SQL Server, which are still used by some national institutions. And there is still a lot of work to do at several levels in this project at a political project, at an organizational pro, uh, level, and uh, at a technical level as well. For instance, seamless integration with organizational systems is underway. Next year, an expansion phase starts, which means we will have a large number of private operators doing their work, and we also need to train people on land administration. So there's still a lot of work to do, and we are certainly moving forward and changing paradigms there in Colombia. And finally, to draw some conclusions, free and open source software and standards are a must to achieve interoperability. There were several tools for specific problems once we started and we have integrated them in a single plugin called LADM Call Assistant. And our solution can only exist because of the hard work other people have done and shared, and contributing back is a way of acknowledging it. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, all the organizers, and greetings to the whole team in Colombia and Switzerland. You <laughs>
you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, are there any questions? Muchas gracias por su presentación, era muy interesante. Um, my question is not technical at all, but uh, I just visited your country, and um, my question is, how does such system support the peace process in the country? Yeah, if, if ever it does, like... Uh, that's actually the framework where we are standing now, right? Because without the peace agreements, we couldn't even start this. So this is actually uh, a response to those peace agreements that we are thinking about our cadaster now, after war. Gracias. Um, I have a question. Is this project uh, related to the Lenin Peace Project? And that is run by University of Twente? Lenin Peace, is mm -hmm. it? No, I haven't heard about it. So. Okay, maybe we can talk later. <laughs> but there is also people from the Netherlands there in Colombia yes, exactly. performing some cadaster work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not only the Swiss that are there. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Okay.